Hello, what is up guys? It's Evil Duos from here today, back with another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to be expanding on our Endless Runner tutorial that we started a couple weeks ago, in which we're going to make some more floor tiles and show you how to randomly select between the different floor tiles as you progress through the level. So you may remember from the last episode we made this floor tile that we called Endless Base, and we have it set to spawn another Endless Base every time you reach the little box right here. So what we want to do is spawn something different other than Endless Base. So to do that, we're going to need to create something that's different than the Endless Base floor tile. So if you forgot where we saved the Endless Base floor tile, you're going to want to navigate to the content browser on the left side. Click on Level Items. Within Level Items, you're going to see Floors. Inside of Floors, you're going to see Actors. And this is where we have Endless Base. Go ahead and hit Control c and Control v to create a copy of Endless Base. Go ahead and rename this. And I'm going to call this Endless Floor 1. So go ahead and double click on Endless Floor 1 and let's hop on in here. So in the viewport, you're going to want to modify this level however you want. Try to keep it contained within this box area. So I guess what I'm going to do is do really simple and delete this floor tile. If you wanted to do something more complex, like create a little staggered level where the player has to jump to here to jump back down, something like this, you can do that very easily. So let's just go ahead and do that. All I did was click these two little icons right here, which keep it in the same uh, direction out of the page or towards you, but moves it in the X and Y coordinates. Or I guess in this case, it's the Z and X coordinates. It keeps it in the same Y frame. So go ahead and compile and save that so we have it saved. Next, we're going to hop over to the event graph. So in the event graph, we have it set to spawn another endless actor, the endless base floor that we already created. What we're going to do is go ahead and copy all this. So copy all of the nodes that go ahead and spawn that floor, Control C and Control V. So under the class option on this new piece that we dragged in, go ahead and click on that and type in endless to filter by all the floor tiles we've created and click endless floor one. We want to spawn in the first floor that we just created at a random chance. So how do we deal with the random nature of this? Go ahead and hit control click on this node to drag it off and get rid of it because we don't need it right now. And take both of these guys and drag them over to the side and then I'll just bring this back over. So how are we going to deal with the random nature of spawning these floor tiles? So what we're going to use is a node called switch on int. So go ahead and right click on the board here and type in switch on int. And it's the last option on the page. When you select this, we need to get an integer and it's going to return a different option. So go ahead and hit the add pin option twice to go ahead and get two nodes, a zero and a one. And then we need to get a random integer. So just go ahead and type in after right clicking random integer. So this is going to get a random integer from zero to whatever the max is. So in this case, we're going to set it to one because we have between 0 and 1. Drag this return value into the selection, connect the node right here, and then drag our different nodes up into this area. Drag the nodes for each of these into each of the different boxes. So what this is going to do is that when the player crosses the box, it's going to switch on in the int, it's going to get a random integer, and it's either going to pick 0 or 1. So if it picks 0, it's going to pick the floor that we created to start, endless base. And if it picks 1, it's going to pick endless floor 1. All right, so a couple mistakes that I made while creating this. Instead of using the random integer node, random integer that we were just using, you need to use the option that is random integer in range. This is because we're going to adjust this as we create different floor tiles, so you're going to want to be able to switch it as you go. So pick random integer in range. The node looks like this, random integer in range. It's the third option down on the list. Pick that one, and you're going to be going between 0 and 1. So plug that node into the switch on int that we grabbed earlier. The next thing you need to do is you need to add a delay between the cast to the switch on int. This is because this moves so quickly that you actually will have times where you'll get both of the 0 and the 1 option at the same time. So it'll spawn two floor tiles and it looks really messed up. So make those two changes to the code that we already did. Copy this over on into the other floor piece, whichever one you just edited on. So in that case, I did it on endless base. So then I'm going to copy this into endless floor 1 and just tie in the nodes. So super simple. If I went too fast, just rewind it. I have the whole piece right here. So you can just make sure you build basically exactly as you see right here. But compile and save that on both things and hop on over into our previewer and hit play to see how this runs out. So as you can see, as the player goes along, the floor tiles will spawn. And eventually, you will get the floor tile that we created earlier where you need to make that jumping puzzle to be able to survive. And we got another one back to back. But it is random in nature. It will spawn them randomly. You see we're back onto straight floor tiles. So now you can make any permutation or combination of floor tiles that you want that fit within this little area, the four grid united area. So let's go ahead and do one more where we're going to go ahead and show you how to adjust the height of the level or basically adjust the spawn location of the floor tiles. And this is also super simple. So all you're going to do is navigate over to endless base, control C and control V to make a duplicate of the endless base tile. 
rename this and we're going to call it Endless Floor 2 because that's really easy to remember. So go ahead and click on Endless Floor 2, navigate over to the viewport, and we're just going to adjust this so that the player has to jump up in the level. So we'll move this piece to right here-ish, and we will move this piece straight up. So the player has to jump vertically. We'll delete this one. Now what we want to do is move this tile. So we see that we moved this floor tile up 340 units in Z. So we need to take the arrow that we have over here and move it also 340 units up in Z. If you don't see where I was looking, if you click on the piece that you moved up, you will see the Z location over on the right side of the screen. My mouse is moving back and forth over here. And that's basically what we're just trying to match. So move the arrow up to match the 340 and the Z and hit compile and save. Now we need to add the tile itself into the selector over here. So we're going to add a pin to our selector, our switch on int, and we're going to make another copy of these three pieces right here. So go ahead and control click on these three pieces, control C and control V. Under this, once again on the class, go ahead and select the class that we're doing, which this time is an endless runner floor two or endless floor two. So that's all set and dandy. Drag the two down here, connect that in, and then adjust our maximum on the random integer and in range from one to two. So now that the switch on in thing is basically going to go between zero, one, or two, it'll pick a random one of the three and spawn the floor tile that it sees. So go ahead and copy this and include it on all three of the different floor tiles that we have. Make sure to compile and save as well. So control C and drag this onto each of the floors. Delete what the floor has currently and add this node in. So delete, control V. Oh, it didn't copy it. So we'll highlight it again, control C, control V. Drag it in, connect the node, compile and save. Same thing here, delete it, control V, drag the node, compile and save. Now if I go to the endless runner and click play, it has a random chance to spawn that floor tile, so hopefully it spawns it soon. All right, it took a while, but it finally spawned it. But as you can see, it brings it right in. Oh, and look, we got two back to back, super random. But anyway, is it really gonna give me three? That's weird. Okay, but hey, gave me three right in a row. The odds of that are one and eight, so hey, it can happen. But anyway, as you can see, we now have the elevation adjustments in our level and they fly all around and you have different things that you have to dodge as a player. So that adjusts one major bit of this, but another major thing you're probably noticing is that the character is just running through a dark void now after we get away from the little background that we created earlier. So let's fix that. So the super easy fix for this is to navigate to the character and head on over to the Endless Runner side scroller character. In the viewport, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a component to the capsule component. So you select the capsule component in the top left corner up here and click add a component. The component you're looking for is paper sprite and we're gonna add that sucker in. We're just gonna call this background. So what you're gonna do is drag this sucker way back so for this sprite right here, navigate back to the main page, or the Endless Runner page over here, and look for the Sprites folder in which we have all the different floor tiles. So the background sprite that we're looking for is located in Level Items, Floors, Sprites, and Sprites. Right here, Background Sprite. So take our Endless Runner character guy over here and drag him over to the side so we can see both of them on the same viewport, and I'll move it up so my webcam's not covering it. Drag BG Sprite into the background sprite location right there. You've got the little source option that pops up right there. So now you have the giant background sprite sitting there behind the character, way back. That actually might be too far back. Let's bring it forward a lot. So negative 5,000 is actually a little too far away, so let's try negative 1,000 and bring that right there. That actually seems like it's still too far. Let's do like negative 50. The next thing we're going to do is scale this sucker huge. So click the little lock icon, and we're going to scale this by like 10 all around and make it big. Now we hit compile and save. And if we navigate back to the Endless Runner map, click on the background sprite that we put in there earlier and just delete it, and hit Control shift s to save everything on the menu. Now if we hit the play button, you see that you have the sprite and it follows the player in the background. So it doesn't move, but at least it gives us a level so that our player isn't just running around in the darkness. So I do hope you found this video useful. If it did help you, if it is going to help you to create your Endless Runner, make sure to leave a like. Check out some of the other videos in this series if you're wondering where some of these assets came from. Uh, definitely check out some of the other videos in this series. It'll help you to fill in on what you missed. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Peace.